and talk about some fashion stuff. Have you guys seen Diesel Spring 2023? Glenn Martins is at it again. He's at it again, at it again. And this is interesting for me because having read the review, it seems like um, Glenn Martins is approaching Diesel um, or Diesel pre-collection as an option for it to be a sort of diffusion line, which is something you don't usually see when a lot of these brands, and maybe because, you know, you mentioned already in the interview or in the review of the show that Diesel isn't a luxury brand in the slightest. It's just playing in that field with the hiring of him and obviously its positioning, but it has no heritage in the luxury fashion business whatsoever. But he's still trying to kind of, you know, get it to that sort of level. But in order to kind of attract the general consumer who maybe is familiar with Diesel, mostly through their denim and their kind of regular streetwear type, type, you know, quote unquote clothes, he's using the pre-collection of the show as an option to appeal to the masses, which is interesting because most brands, I feel like, use the pre as a precursor to the main show or to basically um, showcase the stuff that was left over from the previous collection or put together some odds and ends that they want to present or just keep just basically keep that kind of content machine production machine clothing machine kind of going on so that people want to buy more things and don't have to wait until the very next season for the mainline show there's always things that you can purchase in store and whatever it may be but the one thing i want to mention about this that i thought was very interesting is that i wonder if this look is becoming boring this is the first look in the diesel spring 2023 collection i think that if you look at diesel overall you go to the actual page for instance on vogue runway and you just have a quick scan across some of the latest collections, especially the ones designed under um, Glenn Martin's tutelage, you'll see a lot of the same things, especially, I think it's from here, right? He starts clearly, right? From uh, spring 2023, uh, sorry, spring 2022, all the way to spring fall 2023. And I feel like this might end up going the same way of Alessandro Michele at Gucci, where a particular aesthetic or a particular look that he brings, you know, to the forefront at this brand will end up probably being a blessing and a curse because people will soon grow tired of this aesthetic and i feel like this kind of denim euro trash um aesthetic that he has going on at the moment very maybe y2k type influenced is probably going to die of natural causes very soon because even i being a fan of glenn martin's and liking what he's done so far i'm already kind of getting a little bit bored of it because you can see the you know if anything i could think all these collections from spring 2022 to pre-fall 2023 they all kind of look alike there's not a real big difference in what is what is there for the most part it's all kind of a bit you know one note and a little bit similar obviously the theatrics of the show the runway the flipping models that walk it the casting it's all really cool brilliant and the vibe around it and clearly glimmer is clearly an amazing and astonishing mind you see what he does at wide project and how much he brings to the table and the trends he's able to create and the imagine he's able to capture but i feel like with diesel it's kind of stagnating already maybe it's just a bit of a you know impulsive thing to say now but I feel like only a few collections in already. What is one? Let's see. Collect, let's let's make it all together. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven collections in, and already this look is getting a little bit tired. But it doesn't matter because in this pre-fall collection, there are still some really interesting bits and bobs that I saw that I really liked. I wanted to highlight here that I thought of, of of some level of interest. Um, this look here, which is look number fifteen, this all black look with this amazing bit of paneling on the side. I'm not sure if I mentioned it before. I'm a real stickler for contrast stitching and I'm a real big stickler for paneling. Like when it comes to, you know, you think of the old, you know, Japanese type style uh, fashion bits and bobs that were designed by Hiroshi Fujiwara, Jun Takashi, where you take the sleeve of a bomber jacket and you replace it with a leather sleeve or maybe half leather or maybe you do a bit of um, knitwear or whatever it may be or even, a, a you know, a classic sort of like Carhartt type chore jacket and all the stitching bits, you'd make it contrasting. I love what those little bits of detail. Not sure why, don't ask me why, but I love it. Which is why when I first saw gallery department, I immediately liked the sweatpants and jeans that they put out because of the extra bit of paneling that they put on them to make the pants a bit bigger and make them look like bell bottoms and whatnot. Over time, that look has become very tired and got very boring very quickly. But when I still see stuff like this put together, it definitely does try, you know, trigger something in me. I also like the bag here. This little tote bag with the kind of D logo embossed i feel like on the side looks really cool maybe the material from here doesn't look the bestest in terms of quality but again you can't really ascertain much from a picture taken so far the sunglasses here look pretty interesting in the background of this picture actually 
you've got this frame that goes around it and the glass is kind of suspended by these four different hinges that kind of hold it up together or maybe three maybe it's just these two here on the sides and this one here towards the bridge of the nose but i thought look 15 from diesel uh, pre-4 was pretty interesting as well then on the next one i quickly show you as it loads here take your time your bloody nonsense computer it says diesel pre-4 yet yeah. um look number 19 again one of my favorites um for obvious reasons you can start from the bottom i feel like these new sneakers that he's put together are really cool they look like a really interesting mix between like a skate shoe and something that you maybe see from like a yeezy in terms of the bulbous sort of cloud-like midsole here at the bottom i think they look pretty awesome and then you've got these track pants sorry these combat pants that look really cool i'm not too sure what the deal is because if i'm not sure if you see this but the combat pants look like they're filled up with air or that they look like they're filled with down or something or maybe it's just the style of it was able to hook together but i do like the really excessive nature of the pockets here on the knee and towards the bottom of the pants they look really cool so i'd like to know what it makes this kind of bulbous effects on the combats and if it is someone putting loads of trousers on top of trousers or if it's the way that they've been designed in a way that they cut and they sit this way or that they actually filled with down not be too sure the backpack on the left here the, the model's holding it looks really cool also it reminds me of like the classic mountaineering backpacks that you'd see from you know other legendary mountaineering brands that i can't think of right now but i like the shape of it and everything else in between that looks pretty cool and again the bomber jacket to match the pants as well is really nice it kind of reminds me of that iconic ec miyake uh, bomber jacket that everyone goes crazy for the one that's famously worn by um robin williams back in the day r.i.p they look pretty nice and again interesting traits with the spectacles it looks like there's sunglasses on top of regular glasses there i'm not sure if that's true but that's what it kind of looks like and then continuing on look number 32 this is more of a quintessential glenn martin's look that you would see for you know maybe an iteration or something he'd maybe on interpretation or something he'd maybe do for white project but definitely for mainline gucci in terms of this look but i do like he's able to take those that kind of look and aesthetic and kind of distill it into a quasi you know uh, diffusion line without cheapening the product i don't feel like it's a cheap alternative it just is another version of something he's already done um so you've got this amazing what looks like fur faux fur overcoat that looks like it's reversible um on top of a nice um jacket here that's a bit cropped with a really short skirt which i'm a big fan of him returning or him kind of bringing back the extremely extremely short mini skirt um to the point where it's essentially like a belt <laughs> you know it's not that it's not that thicker than a belt i feel like it's maybe three belts thick in terms of its overall length so that's pretty wild and i'm pretty sure the shape of it maybe would only suit a particular type of lady i'm sure if you have a more voluptuous buttocks it'd be a bit more difficult to get your bum into these pants and then you've got these nice um you know mid you know calf size boots that have become really popular in the last few years as well i feel like and it's nice kind of massive d logo emblazoned on the left hand side of it let's look for some more here You've got this great collection also i feel like the tracksuit looks really cool um it's looks like if i'm not mistaken from the again just from the picture itself i don't think it's a nylon -y type material it looks like it might be regular cotton with an attached hood on it as well and he's got matching gloves which i'd like to see the look of those i'd love to get a pair of diesel gloves to wear day in day out but this is a great roadman look with some general sneakers you got the big logo here on the side of the pants and towards the back i imagine this is going to be very popular um with rappers and people in culture in general i'm sure they're going to get a real kick out of wearing this day in day out look number 38 um continue on a couple more looks i think i got here we've got look number 34 which again i'm a fan of just classic glenn martins in terms of the approach it looks like it could be it looks like whatever material is printed on there but i'm sure it's just regular you know sweatshirt material made to look a little bit like denim um, I like these long boot socks things going on with the logo. I'm a big fan of the nice little purse. I'm a big fan of as also the bracelet. Um, that's pretty cool. And the same glasses the other model was wearing. Um, as you can see there, like right, that material probably looks like something else, but I'm sure it's just regular sweatshirt material. But that was pretty cool. Uh, let's move over from that one. And what's this? Look number 51 out of 57 another favorite of mine as you can tell why you've got these nice denim um you know double knee type of combat type of material going on there you've got a nice leathery looking 
um, what do you call that? Over that, what, I don't know what that look is called. I remember getting those pants. I think Rick has got those type of pants as well. They kind of look a little bit like oil spill. Um, so it's really shiny black uh, shirt you got there on top of or underneath a basically long short jacket thing that looks pretty cool as well. And obviously the hoodie on top. I'm a big fan of. So all those things are looking pretty decent, pretty fly. And you've got this look here towards the end. Look at number fifty six, where the models wearing this amazing down jacket. That looks really, really cool and kind of reminds you a lot of the crochet type stuff you saw Jacquees wear recently. I think it might be Bottega Veneta. It's kind of all weaved in like that. Um, that kind of reminds me a little bit of that. So, so with the kind of down jacket with the little squares on it. Um, I do like the skirt. It looks like it could be roses or it looks like it could be flipping pictures of explosions or kind of, you know, um, what what they call nuclear bombs going off all over the place. I like the fact that they've kind of, you know, um, oiled up her feet I feel like with black models whenever they come to these sort of shoes they leave the feet incredibly dry it looks really horrible and then you've got this nice bag also that looks pretty clean um, this bag might end up being very popular I'm even a fan of the shape itself and the way that the models kind of tied it on here make it look like a Birkin with the handkerchief on there and the jewels of course I'm a big fan of so yeah really really good collection overall I can't be mad at this but like I said I wonder if um if this sort of like pre-collection if turning your pre-collection into a a diffusion brand is going to be a lot of things that people are going to be interested in going forward i'm not really too sure because i think he mentions it here in the review in it there somewhere let me see i think it's in this bit where is oh where did i put the review is it there it is so he mentions it here in the review courtesy of Vogue runway courtesy of luke leach um i think he says here where is it um because diesel is not a luxury brand um, and this is important to remember this means that our pre-collections unlike say Louis Vuitton or Balenciaga is speaking pre to the same customer as the main one are for a different audience than our shows although there is some overlap our shows are for more people in the fashion industry while with our pre-collection we try to speak to everyone my brother my mother teenagers in high school everyone so it's a very different exercise for me which again pretty cool way to approach um a diffusion line quasi because i guess not people don't really say diffusion line nowadays i wonder if because they don't want the customers to get an idea that this is anything less than the main brand and they want to have it occupy the same sort of level i'm not really too sure or if it's just a way to kind of get out of um naming it something like that i'm not really too sure when it comes to those kind of things but i do like it's an overall appeal and what it's about so definitely big up diesel and get martin doing but I am curious to know if there will come a time where people will become bored of this aesthetic and it will come very, because again, it's only seven collections in at the moment and I'm kind of getting a little bit bored of it. And if we saw Alessandro Michele getting the boot at D&G, or sorry, Gucci, I imagine maybe if this keeps continuing, would there be competitions around Glenn Martin's being taken out? I don't think so because I don't think anyone was talking about Diesel prior to Glenn Martin's getting there and doing what he's doing. And I'm sure the sales numbers have reflected that because even I've seen myself when I've been going out, even some gig I played that recently, a DJ that came after me was very hipster and very kind of cool. He was holding one of those kind of um, Dolce and Gabbana sort of, um, sorry, um, diesel side bag things with the logo on it. I'm sure most of you know what I'm talking about, but if I'm not mistaken, let's say it's a diesel bag. It's a really famous one. And he was using that as his DJ bag. So, if I'm seeing hipster guys using that, I can imagine the general consumer has probably got a real punch. Of, yes, I think it was one of these bags, this one. It's called the Diesel uh, Bijou. Bijou bag, right? Is that what it's called? Bijou? No, it's not. Uh, no, no. Diesel. Sorry, my bad. Diesel shoulder bag. Is it called a name? What's the name of it? Yeah, it's called a shoulder bag. I think a Bijou is um, it's meant to be a, a. What you call it? Bijou is like jewelry, isn't it? I think it's in, in French. Jewelry or something like that? Bijou? Bijou or is that or is that sweet? I'm not too sure. One or the other. But anyway, it's a shoulder bag thing I saw a DJ wearing and um, carrying all their DJ stuff in there in terms of headphones and USB stuff. So um, clearly it's kind of got some sort of cachet with the people in the know. So they probably might end up keeping it alive. But it's interesting the distinction that he made between this and the main line. So let's see what happens going forward with this. But um, I wonder if it's going to end up becoming tired sooner rather than later. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. 